Hello, welcome or welcome back to our channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about Cambridge Advanced Reading and Use of English, part five. We're going to look at four really important things to bear in mind for reading and use of English, part five. These four things will really help you get to grips with this tricky part of the exam and help you to answer those really difficult questions. At the end of the video, you'll have chance to do some exam style reading part five practice with feedback from me on the correct answers. So that's definitely worth sticking around for. If you've got your advanced exam coming up or just want to learn more about what it involves, why don't you subscribe to Home Studies? All right, ready to begin? Let's start off by recapping what part five of the advanced reading is all about. In this task, you're given a long text and six multiple choice questions to answer. The reading text could be from a range of sources. It might be from a newspaper or a magazine article. It could be an extract from a novel or it could come from a journal. The six questions will test your understanding of the text. But they're going to test much more than just basic comprehension skills. In this part of the exam, the questions will test your detailed understanding of the text. So that includes things like understanding the writer's opinions, implications that they might make, purpose and tone. So let's have a look at these things and see what they involve. One of my friends has an opinion on everything. Just ask him what he thinks about a certain topic and he'll go on about it for hours. In fact, you often don't have to ask him. He'll just tell you. What about you? Do you have friends like that too? Well, in a text, we want to understand the writer's opinions. And that's one of the things that Cambridge will be testing you on. How well you're able to identify and to understand the writer's opinions. Let's have a look at a part five style question that focuses on the writer's opinion. This extract is taken from a newspaper column. The writer begins by describing something that happened to them a few years ago. Pause the video while you read the text and try and answer the question below. Press play when you've chosen an answer. The correct answer here is B. The writer believes that we live in a classist society, that some people are prejudiced against people they see as lower class. We can tell this from where she writes, it's a class thing. And also the fact that she mentions it winds her up, meaning it annoys her. Notice that the final sentence of the extract talks about missing out. Missing out is a key word in option D, but the text isn't talking about things that the writer missed out on in the past. This is a classic distractor when they give you an answer to try and trick you. Imagine the scene. You've got all dressed up to go out for dinner and your partner looks at you and says, oh, you're wearing that, are you? How do you feel? Pretty annoyed if you're anything like me. He didn't say directly that he didn't like your outfit, but that's the implication. Implication is what someone seems to be suggesting without saying it directly. And in reading part three, we also need to be aware of anything that the writer implies. Let's have a look at a part five style question that focuses on implication. This extract is taken from a newspaper article about the use of technology in exams. Pause the video while you read the text and try to answer the question below. Press play when you've chosen an answer. The correct answer here is C. It lowers the standard of the exam. The key here is where the writer states that most people associate multiple choice questions with dumbing down. 
Dumbing down means making things simpler and easier for people to understand. My cousin had a baby last year. A few months after the baby was born, we went for a cup of tea and we were catching up for the first time in ages. She told me that she'd felt a bit hurt because after the baby was born, none of her friends came round to visit her. She'd thought that it was because they didn't care or they weren't interested in meeting the baby. But it turned out that they just wanted to give her some time to get used to being a new mum. It just shows how often we can misunderstand someone's purpose, the reason why somebody acts or behaves in a particular way. Purpose is really important in a text too. What is the writer's purpose? Are they trying to inform you or to persuade you? Do they want to entertain you or to educate you? It's really important that you're able to identify this. Let's have a look at a part five style question that focuses on the writer's purpose. This extract is taken from a newspaper column written by an artist on the topic of letters. The title of the article is A Week of Letters. One of the letters that she's received is from an ex-mercenary. A mercenary is a soldier who fights for anybody who will pay them. Pause the video while you read the text and try to answer the question below. Press play when you've chosen an answer. The correct answer here is B, to inform her on a subject she had misunderstood. There is one key expression in the text that provides the answer to the question. The phrase is to put someone straight, which means to tell somebody or show somebody that they've made a mistake, to correct them. So while you might not have known this expression, it's also possible to rule out the other answers a, C and D, because the text doesn't mention any of them. Have you ever had a text from someone and not been sure if they were joking or serious? You might send a message that you think is obviously a joke, but the reader might take it seriously and be offended or hurt. It can be a common problem when emailing or texting because it's really difficult to convey your tone in these kinds of short messages. In a piece of writing, the reader picks up on the writer's tone by their choice of words and what they choose to include. So, for example, course books are usually written in a neutral tone, not too formal or informal. Take a look at these examples of different types of text and think about what kind of tone the writer might use when writing them. Pause the video while you think about it. These are my ideas. Did you come up with something similar? Okay, let's have a look at a part five style question that focuses on the writer's tone. This extract is part of a longer text about a woman who travels to Mount Kilimanjaro. Pause the video while you read the text and try to answer the question below. Press play when you've chosen an answer. The answer is C, inspirational. We know this because the writer starts off by emphasising all the factors that originally made her think that she couldn't achieve her goal. But as the extract progresses, we discover that she persevered and she managed to climb the mountain. She says, you don't have to put up with situations. There are infinite opportunities out there. The writer wants the reader to believe that they can do whatever it is they dream about doing. Now, time for you to have a go at a real part five exam task and see if you can put what we've talked about into practice. Pause the recording while you download the practice pack that goes with this video. 
It contains a real part five reading text and six multiple choice questions for you to work through. Restart the video when you're ready to check your answers. OK, ready? Let's go through the answers then. First, question one. How does the writer feel about the way people react to her daughter's successes? Well, what does the text say on this topic? We need to look at the second half of paragraph one, the section that begins, I try not to be insulted when people ask, where on earth does she get it from? This sentence and the rest of paragraph one show that the correct answer to question one must be B. To feel put out is a synonym for being insulted. And the expression, they don't credit her in option B means they don't give her the credit or they don't believe that she's responsible for her daughter's talent. So let's have a look at why the other answers are wrong. Firstly, answer A. So while the writer does describe feeling negative emotions, these are caused by other people, not by her daughter. Secondly, answer C. Remember that the answers to the questions must come only from the text not from your own knowledge or expectations. So you can imagine that as a mum, she must feel proud of her daughter, but this isn't actually stated anywhere in the text. So it's not the right answer. And finally, answer D. The wording of option D, to get defensive about something, means that you behave like someone is emotionally attacking you. While the writer might feel like she's being attacked, she does state that she tries very hard not to feel insulted. So this implies that she hides her feelings. So the answer can't be D. Okay, question two. How did the visit to the girls' school make the writer feel? Which answer did you choose? The correct answer is C. We know this because at the beginning of paragraph two, the writer says that the visit reminded her just how dire school sport was. Dire is another word for awful or horrible. Later in the same paragraph, she writes that after seeing some girls playing hockey, it all came back to me. The words that she uses to describe her own experience of school sports are consistently negative. So the answer must be C. What about the other answers? Let's have a look and see why those are wrong. Well, simply, there's a lack of evidence for any of the other options. The writer doesn't describe her school days with any fondness, so option A can't be correct. She doesn't mention her daughter at all, apart from saying that she accompanied her, so B can't be correct. And finally, she doesn't mention wanting to take up a new sport. Indeed, after everything she's written in the first two paragraphs of the text, this would seem very unlikely. Let's move on to question three. For question three, we aren't given a question as such, but instead we need to identify which one of the four options is something that a particular person says. The first job is to identify the part of the text that focuses on what this person says. And we can find it in paragraphs three and four of the text. These paragraphs discuss research by Helen Haste, a psychologist. And the text mentions twice that according to her, girls feel uncomfortable exercising in front of other people. The word self-conscious reveals that the answer must be D, because being aware of being watched is the exact definition of being self-conscious. So what about the other answers? Let's check why they're not correct. Well, regarding option A, the psychologist does say that many girls are too embarrassed to exercise, but many girls is not the same as most girls. And more importantly, Option A says that girls aren't interested in exercise, and that doesn't match what it says in the text, 
which is that girls often do want to get fitter, but are discouraged. Also, the psychologist doesn't mention exercise facilities or girls teasing each other. So these can't be the correct answers. OK, now question four. Here we need to identify what conclusion the psychologist comes to. What she says is that we need to think about ways of exercising within the school curriculum, which make sure that girls feel comfortable. This matches with option D because they both express what needs to happen and they're both talking about changes made within the school system. Now, let's have a look at the other answers and see why those aren't correct. With regards to option A, the writer never says that this problem is unsolvable. Option B is not really connected to the topic of the text. The writer is concerned with girls' attitude to sport and she doesn't comment on girls and boys competing against each other. And finally, although the writer says that schools need to deal with the issue, nowhere in the text does she blame the teachers. Let's move on to question five. The question here concerns the head teacher at the school the writer visited with her daughter. And again, there isn't a question as such, but you have to select the, the one option that's true. And the relevant section of the text here is in paragraph six. Apparently the headmistress implied that because the school was doing well academically, sport wasn't really important. So the answer must be C. Let's look at the other options. Option A can't be correct because the writer says that the head teacher was unapologetic about the lack of sports facilities. Option B is contradicted by the passage of the text that we've already looked at. And option D, well, although the head teacher isn't bothered about sporting achievement, she doesn't actually say that she discourages it. Finally, let's look at question six. Again, we have to select which of the statements is true. And it's paragraph six where we can find the information that we need. The important section is where it says that the daughter sneered at the head teacher's attitude to sport. To sneer is to react in a way that makes it clear that you don't respect or approve of something. It can be in the way that you say something or it can be in your facial expression. So this part of the text shows that the answer is option B. Let's have a look at the other options. So firstly, option A, this one can't be true because although the head teacher gave a speech, it doesn't mention anywhere in the text that the daughter actually spoke personally to the teacher. Option C, well, we don't know whether this statement is true or not. The only aspect of the school that the writer actually comments on is the sports facilities. And finally, option D. It doesn't say anywhere in the text that the girl was intimidated by the head teacher. And given that she sneered at her, it would seem unlikely that this was the case. OK, so that's all for today then. Hopefully you now feel more comfortable with reading and use of English part five. If this video was useful, then please click like and share it on your socials. What about you? Do you have any advice or strategies that help you with part five? If so, then put them in the comment section below. Well, have a great day and I hope to see you soon in our next video. Goodbye.